Okay, so here is where the newest addition to my LP shelves are. Upstairs, this is in a completely different part of the house from where all the other records are. It's more room though. This is about as much, this is exactly how much shelf space I've added. If I moved up my sort of 60s pop and rock gospel all the blues records all my country records I got some good some good country in here you know here's here's a big one everybody loves original capital um, international weirdness African folk and blues. So that's all up here now. And this is all now room I have in the main room and main part of the house. Let's check that out. thread here on WRFI Community Radio. If you didn't know, I do appreciate, tuning, appreciate you tuning in. As always, I have a heavy dose of, a um, heavy basket, we'll say, of psychedelia and sort of far out progressive music. We heard the French group Catherine Ribeiro and Alps Dengue, or Deng, from Aim Debout, 1972 on Phillips. This is a, you know, the Alps with Catherine Ribeiro. Just um, really navigate progressive landscapes in an interesting way. Some really sort of um, left of center guitar on these albums. They had a string of about four records in the early 70s. Definitely all worth checking out. We heard from the uh, UK, I guess, jazz rock combo with Manfred Mann, his Chapter 3 group playing from Volume 2 on the Vertigo label. The old verticals were all checking in. Uh, Jump Before You Think was the name of that record. I'm, I'm looking through the records as I'm talking about them. Ah, uh, yes, here it is. Manfred Man Chapter 3. You know, two albums before he would do The Earth Band. Both really great. There's some super good break-worthy tracks on these albums. Uh, that is from 1970. 1968 LP by The Koala. Self-titled, one and only record on Capitol. A classic late 60s sort of one-off psychedelic group on a major label. The track we heard, a little bit of a punky vibe, was Colors of Our, Colors of Our Rainbow. And you know, when I see a record that I have like this, I've, I can tell I've had it for a long time because, well, I remember buying this at the WFMU Record Fair years and years ago, maybe about 2006, 7, 8, somewhere in there. But it's not in the nicest shape, so, you know, that tells you that I was maybe less discerning, but probably got this for a heck of a bargain. So, anyway, one off record by The Koala. And we started the set with Kevin Ayers and the whole world shoot shooting at the moon on the Harvest label. The one label and one record he did with this group. Of course, he did have his other solo albums that he was doing at the time, but this is the one with this band, which included Mike Oldfield, as I, as I discussed. And uh, let me look at the back of the sleeve here. Uh, yeah, as I said, Bridget St. John contributes... Um, where is he? Mike Ratledge or is acknowledged, but it is produced by Peter Jenner, who was working with Pink Floyd early on. Mike Goldfield, and was, as we uh, discussed earlier with the track, Colores para Dolores, featuring Robert Wyatt on the vocal. Great album, 1970 on the Harvest label. All right, yeah, as I said, this is Searching for a Thread here on WRFI Community Radio. Once again, coming with you, coming to you, Wednesdays at 5 o'clock. I'm going to get into another uh, sort of long piece here. One-off record, solo record by 
Bruce Palmer, who was in the Buffalo Springfield doing something completely different, going all full Eastern um, on this album. The cycle is complete on the Vanguard label. Or, I'm sorry, the Verve Forecast label, actually. Let's get that right. Here it is. Hey, VC. What's up? Feels like it's been a minute since I've done anything and uh, had a night of uh, some listening and a nap or two, so I'm up a little late. Why not dial up your old friends at the VC, I said. So... I had planned on putting this together. This is um, sort of me revolving around reorganizing my collection, but not not entirely. But um, a little bit of new shelf space and a need to file 400 plus records, which I've mainly filed most of them. I've interspersed, I'm going to intersperse more uh, footage of what I've done and the sort of like progress of how I reorganize those things including the new section which, many of which I'll show from here um, I reorganized the jazz to break it down into into four five six uh, sub genres that made sense so that's all being interspersed here and as part of that goes even though I have been I have been acquiring new records it has not been a quiet January by any stretch but I've been very selective um, I am digging into stuff that I've had for many years when you know I think that's natural that you do that when you reorganize and that's kind of the point isn't it it's kind of the point to replay these things that you actually have um, I like to think about it and this has been talked about like shopping in your own collection um, you know that's kind of what you're doing because a lot of the records you have you do not know <laughs> you do not know them very well at all do you remember anything about them do you remember what they sound like Probably not, in some cases. Anyway, we're listening to the great Ben Chastney, Six Organs of Admittance. This is one of his early albums, uh, Dark Noontide, uh, released on the Holy Mountain label in uh, 2000, early 2000s, the year's not in front of me. I think it's, I think it's even like 2002 or three. You, there's a lot of Six Organs of Admittance and most of it's good. I'd say that there's only there's a good handful, a good chunk that are great and worth having. This is one of them. Uh, record for Drag City mainly after this. Um, he does have some collaborators on this, but um, in any case, this is a Holy Mountain record, as I said. Dark Noontide. And so yeah, I'm going to show a bunch of things, sort of like more stream of conscious, more sort of like what was inspiring me as I was pulling out records to move around and lift and not destroy. Um, I'm going to start with these two 45s. I got these recently, actually. This 45, I've had my want list since, this is one of the early ones I had my want list. It was not expensive, but it was always seen abroad. And at some point I just looked, I'm like, oh, there's a U.S. copy. It's Pole Musa by uh, the Kenyan artist Peter Sotsi. And this is with uh, Nashil Pritchin and the Equator Sound Band. It's Kenyan. This is an absolutely stunning song. I'm going to insert it. I highly encourage you all to stream this track. Look it up. It was featured on the um, Africa Dances LP that's on the um, um, original sound label that does a lot of great African records. I should go pull it, but I'm not going to. I think it's actually now in another room. <laughs> it's in a different part of the house now. Uh, there's the b-side but um this, there's a few different pressings of this this is like a eight to ten dollar 45 so not crazy uh, this song is incredible um absolutely incredible uh, i'll put in a cover image of the art of the compilation that it's on where i first discovered it but i wanted to get this original 45. um lovely Pole musa kenyan just a light sort of like airy song some great vocals some great accompaniments and great percussion. I like that it also came with this original uh, company sleeve. I guess it would be. If it's not original, who cares? It's awesome. Musa ni mefumi 
And the other one is a shout out to Alan, the Static Traveler, because a long time ago now, year, two years, who knows, Alan built, you know, he likes to do all those short videos, but he did a quick little sort of video on a couple 45s he found. And this song with the almond, le almond lettuce really stuck out to me. I believe this is the B side, but this song was, I really caught my ear to, to Henry with Hope by the Almond Lettuce. A sort of one-off psych pop band. The other, the other side, uh, the Tree Dog song is not very good, if I remember. I think, you, I think you agree, Alan, but this song was, there was something really special about this song. And he played the whole song. I'll have to see if I can find the video, but I'll, he, I, I probably can. We'll look. Um... But this song really jumped out to me. And this is another cheap 45. And the seller had these two 45s. I got them from uh, one seller. How nice. Isn't that nice when that happens? All right. So let me explain what's going on here. Um, you saw upstairs I created or... We have two those two blue uh, shelving units that now have I've moved all the records downstairs up there, so that is all of the room I now have to work with downstairs. A good, pretty good amount. I'll be full, but I made some room in this section, which is now I moved some things around. A lot of my South American stuff is here, some soundtracks and all of the '80s sort of indie noise rock. These two boxes are completely full of records unsorted all from 2023 and some 2022 so I gotta sort those before I file them and we go to my living room here where I have the main shelves that I have to work with that have been um, changed as you can see yes Chris last days of the Christmas tree um, so I'm not doing a room tour or anything but did that anyway this box, that box, and three, five boxes here total with unsorted records that need to be filed. So over here, I moved stuff around. This was like blues and country. Now it is all of my German Krautrock and New Zealand music specifically. So that's all Krautrock and New Zealand music. And uh, over here, I was using this as my staging area for records I was listening to. Now it's... Um, organize a little more. I've moved a lot of my international music here. Uh, what is this stuff? I don't even remember. Oh yeah, this is like all of my uh, classic rock. I have two copies of this. This is the 3 LP expanded. Yeah, I have like a basically all the classic rock and you know, like that's a mono original. Um, that's all down here now. And over here. That's some more of it there, the this, this 60s, 70s classic stuff. And then over here I've created a couple new sections. This I'm going to divide up a little more, but this is right now uh, modern composers and uh, modern classical. Here we have more ambient and sort of uh, new age stuff. And then here, well right here, stuff I still need to listen to, or some of the stuff I still need to listen to. Phone's ringing. And then right here is a new section I made for my wife and for me. This is all I call Mind Melt. Natural Information Society, Woo. I got Blue Jim Tyranny. I got, this is a great album, Talk West. Lori Spiegel. What else is in here? It's the Roberto Mushi's uh, Mind Maintenance, of course. Uh, Ernest Hood. So anyway, and the Arikas are all here. That's a new section. And then I got all that space down there, so I'm working with that. Some 10 inches. And then over here, 
course we have to see our chrome print. This is going to be all jazz. It was mainly all jazz before, but now it will be completely all jazz. I think the bottom two cubes were not jazz. Speaking of jazz, we're listening to Sunrise Path to Unknown Worlds. One of the few uh, Impulse originals. That shelf will have tons of space. I have a lot of jazz to file, so I got a lot of room there. And then over here, there's another bin of stuff that needs to be filed. And I made some room in this section. You can see there's some slack cubes where I will fit. This is all punk, post-punk, and reggae. So that's where I'm at right now. And the main room has not changed yet. This is all... I'll probably have to make some room in there for sure. I have to figure out what. That's probably where Purge is going to come. So here's from some of the new sections I've been pull pulling together. Just some records that inspired me in the moment. These aren't new. Uh, I this one might have been from last year, actually. This is the Tasty Morsels release. Uh, H. Hunt playing piano for my dad. This is, a, this is a gorgeous album. He's simply playing piano music for his dad. It doesn't really talk about, did his dad die? Was his dad in the room? I'm, I'm guessing it's his dad passed, but... It's all music as a tribute to his dad, solo piano. Um, yeah, just a very simple album, but it's just very touching. The, the last track, Go Home, really stands out. Um, you can hear him sort of humming along to it. Played by Harry Hunt, son of John, at Studio Ferber, Paris. Um, but this is a, um, a UK, I believe it's a UK artist, and a UK label, Tasty Morsels. They all have these, this nice, just a pat of butter on the cover. I highly recommend this. I don't know what the availability of it is right now, but um, it's a very soothing album, very, um, I wouldn't quite call it ambient. It's, it's, it's definitely sort of, you know, tinges of jazz and sort of modern classical. H. Hunt playing piano for my dad. This is now in the mind melt section. As is this, this is a this is a hallmark of the mind melt section. Joshua Abrams and Chad Taylor mind maintenance. I mean, I'm I'm a I wouldn't say I'm a, ja a Josh Abrams completist, but I'm up there when it comes to his work. Recently, this is also on Drag City. Well, I mentioned Drag City before with Six Organs, but this is on Drag City. It's it, they build it as a group, my mean it's, but it's really a little side project with Josh Reeves and Chad Taylor, who's obviously both Natural Information Society. Um, I mean, this is really a, a Natural Information side project, complete with the Lisa Alvarado cover. Um, it's simple though. Chad Taylor and Bira and Abrams are just doing that Gwimbry, but it's sort of like you know, almost like they're warming up for what they're going to do in the jet in the in the Natural Information Society. But don't take that as a sort of detractor. Hi, I'm weaving. Um, <laughs> this is beautiful. It's sort of repetitive in that way, but if you know Josh Abrams' music and the Natural Information Society, you'll know that there's repetition built in. So uh, this is on Drag City, so it's e you can get this. It's spectacular. It's real and it's spectacular. The next one, uh, this one also not new, but this is from the WFMU Fair. A record that was um, not quite as free and uh, out there as I thought was Tyler. Um, just I believe it's just self-titled Charles Taylor Quartet, isn't it? Oh no, Eastern Eastern Alone. No, it's just Charles Tyler. Um, with this back cover, you know, the ESP disc stuff is always sort of variants with the sleeves. Charles Teller, Dave Baker, Brent McKesson, McKesson, don't know him, and Kent Brinkley. Um, it's from 19, uh, 1967, recorded in Indianapolis of all places. But sax, cello, and two basses. Um, I really enjoyed this one. Um, it was a good, nice afternoon listen. I bought this at, um, I think, Mind Cure at WFMU. Deep Groove Labels, even. Man Alone, Charles Tyler. Um, really, um, definitely it's free music, but it, it 
it stands on its own. It kind of it leaves you sort of wanting more in that good kind of way. I think I don't know if you know what I mean, but it it, it makes you want to listen to it again, and that's what I'm gonna to have to do. Um, the craft of bearing witness to the crumbling system of Western civilization and simultaneously to the culmination of the positive forces of the universe in such a manner that only the truly honest, the compassionate, the wise can understand is a virtuous skill that requires a certain alienation from matter itself. <laughs> So mid file, I've now sorted all the records. Here's all the empty boxes. I'm South American. And we have piles of records. Don't ask me right now what the individual piles are. No, they're not gonna stay like this for a while, I know. That giant one is just the jazz. The, the middle one there, that's kind of my indie ambient, sort of like ambient guitar stuff. It's sort of, you know, yeah. Uh, indie rock and more recent things, you know, psych and stuff, all over the place. Composers, New Zealand, German. Yeah, so everything's out. Now I got a file, and that's gonna probably honestly be like weeks of me sort of chipping away at this. There it is. This is midway through. This is Cass McCombs, Prefection. Now I pulled out, I have a few of his records, I really was into him. This is going back to the mid-2000, early to mid-2000, 2006 I think, 2005. This is his second album. Now these, this record and another one I won't show, A, um, are quite valuable now, over a hundred bucks. And so I was thinking about selling them because, you know, if you're not listening to it, why not, you know, it's worth some money, why not sell it? But I listened to this and I'm like, no, I'm keeping it. This is excellent. It's sort of, he kind of has a Dylan thing about him, but um, he's doing it from a sort of more, <laughs> even more ramshackle at times. Um, great lyricist, great vocalist. This is a white pressing, so it, I guess there's less of these, but um, he's out of Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland. And, uh, this album, the album before A, I, I have both those and I, they're great. I'm not selling them, so I'm happy to essentially discover it. I remember the record well. This one has a bit of a sort of stripped down shoegaze feel to it, where the early one is a little more on the folkier side. There's an EP that I have on CD called Not The Way that only came out in the UK as a double seven inch, which I really want, and that is fantastic. Excellent songs. Um, sort of a basement tapes, Dylan, New Morning kind of like feel to the songs really sort of leering, uh, searching, sort of like just real cool desperation on the songs, but um, I don't know if I never, however, people remember this one, but uh, Master at Abbey Road, it does sound good, but it's kind of like an indie, you know, this one's a little on the psychedelic side, I'd say, you know, it's a little sort of like, sort of wigged out guitar a little bit. Um, but he, he's primarily coming from a singer-songwriter perspective, and then I do have CDs of a few other his albums. I don't think I really enjoyed where he's gone since, and I, I venture to say I will not be, I don't have any other of his records, and so I don't need anything past these few, but... We have rediscovered that one. And I've been playing the CDs I have of him in the car because I have these albums on CD too. Why not? Go figure. Uh, Dungen, Dungen, the Swedish 
prog site group now I had look at this look at this back cover I do have 130 some records that I pulled out to, to sell to purge because I frankly couldn't fit anymore otherwise um, but I think I pulled out two of the eight Dungeon records I had to sell this one I pulled out to sell listen to it and I kept keeping it this is a soundtrack and this was RSD I don't quite remember it as RSD but 2016 on Kamado um, it's their E series out CO album and the first all instrumental endeavor maybe that's why I like it it's cool to have hear an instrumental situation I guess it's not a soundtrack I don't know why I thought this was a soundtrack this is great this is great you know they it's not exactly prog I mean it's it's certainly progressive you know the Todd Det Lunt album is really like a, a psychedelic masterpiece I'd say this beautiful inner sleeve here this was cool is this another white well, I don't like white vinyl yeah uh, I bet this is cheap I think if maybe there's a black version that's cheap who knows this is a good band great players I've seen them before great instrumentalists um, I've seen them do like a sort of they, yeah they they had like a jazz rock sort of run too like they had, they were kind of a psych group then they went a little more prog or progressive and then there's like a few records out of straight up jazz rock which I think I got rid of one kept one I'm, I'm not gonna pull out the other ones um, if anyone's interested in the ones I am selling you let me know Al Gromer Khan that I did get maybe early last year. Zubon. This has never been reissued. It's a strange, he, he, it's a strange composer sort of doing, um, you know, bringing synthesizer music in to sort of um, make his own sort of like synth. Um, God, I just listened to this too and it's such a strange record, but I was actually listening to it to make sure I wanted to keep it. And I do. There's vocals and sitar on this, tabla. Yeah, it is sort of a merging of, of Eastern and, and Western. One of these tracks was comped on a numeral comp. One of the synth comps. But Al Gromer Khan actually did play in Pulp of Vu as well. For a time, I think later on, the sort of the later sort of records. Um, but this is from 1981. Um, yeah, and by the way, the sleeve is just almost like that's all it is. So I have piece of cardboard sleeve in there seven melodies to please the heart yeah a cool one at times it, there's a few moments where you're like eh, is this losing me but it but it it stuck with me um i love the vibe of what he's going for it's certainly a unique sound but anything where synthesizers are getting in or, or rubbing elbows with with um eastern sounds is it's hard not to like that so that's what we have there all right, so I'm back with you now, and all the new records are put away, but it wasn't without some casualties. There's this section all full. You'll remember in here there was tons of stuff everywhere. Clear. Now this stuff that's out, this is what's outstanding in terms of new stuff I haven't played yet, stuff I'm still sort of dealing with, some things I want to show on the channel. Okay. Remember all this was made space for, this is now all filled in. The mind melt section is down here now. Starting up there, I have to do new cards. I have new cards coming. This is New Zealand and German. It's completely full. I had to put sort of the last New Zealand comp somewhere else. So that's a problem, because there's no way I'm not gonna be adding to that. This is where the most room is. I actually had more room than I thought for the jazz, so the, all the jazz is filed now. And I have some space, as you can see, except for the very bottom cube is all of my progish stuff. I call it prog-like symptoms, so that last cube. I actually added a bunch to that with all those pole records. So the jazz has room to fill in. And there is some room over here in the punk, post-punk, and reggae now some like hip-hop and electro and stuff down there so there's a little bit of room in here over here I did a bunch of stuff tonight that's what I finished up with all of this is purge 
most likely all this is going. That's a good mm, 75 records. So this is all now redone and basically filled in. There's really no room. I added a lot to a modern ambient section. I'll just call it like ambient nouveau or something. But this is all mainly indie. Well, it's, and there's more indie down here, but it's all filled in. All these sections are full. There's a little bit of space down there where there's African. A little bit, but this whole wall is completely filled in. Maybe a little bit of room to breathe up there. I have that toast section and folk. That's all folk. So, this is stuff that's getting purged. I am in a decent spot at the moment. Here's one I've had for a long time and pulled out to play. Um, and it is a psych record, but it's definitely kind of a little more like a David Axelrod kind of thing with breaks. I, I bet it's been sampled. This is the second album by Bobby Callender. I talked to Vinyl Richie about this, or I left a comment about this, but because it's kind of similar to the Damon album in some ways. Bobby Callender, a sort of uh, self self imposed mystic from New York, kind of got turned on and started making very spiritual, very sort of like flowery guru sort of like influence music. He had to travel around with an entourage. He's just a really cool character. I'll show a picture of him real quick because I have the other record. I think I have it right here. Yeah, I think I do. This right, you can really see him here, and this is his first album. This is a little more straight psych record. This one is where he gets into sort of. Um, heavy, com heavier composition and more sort of strings and sort of moody. It's like a song cycle. But there he is, Mr. Bobby Callender, who actually reunited, got together with. Whoa! Saved it. He got together with a band to, recently in Orlando, of all places, to perform this album. But this is the way. First book of experiences, a double album. Only one release on this label. Private label, or is it? I think it's not really a private label. I think it was his label. Mithra. I mean, it's got a New York City address. It looks like it's a sub-label of something, but it doesn't say. Anyway, this is like a... You know, there's lots of sort of mantras on this. There's ohms, there's... Um, yeah, like sweeping strings, as I said, some big breaks, this, you know. Each track kind of runs into each other. It's it's a big song cycle. So you kind of really, it's one that you kind of, things poke out to you as you listen to the whole thing. There's a, there's a theme that comes back. I think it's, it's hard to say. There's a theme that comes back in, around in the song a bunch of times. But it's a very unique record. You have to kind of get into his sort of like, you got to get into his level to really get this, I think. It's a double album though, from 1970. Look at this awesome illustration too. There's a Canadian press on Polydor, which I also had for a while. I gifted that to a friend. This is the first US on this Mithra label. Yeah, a real bizarre listen at this time is where you're like, do I like this? And you realize by the end, you're like, I do. I do like this. I like this Bobby Calendar. I do. Um, it's it's a it's a version of psychedelia, but he's he's really going for a big thing. And apparently, he would show up to the studio with people throwing flowers around his feet and like an entourage, and people who would like come and and like prep the the space for him and like tell the producers like, oh, Bobby, you know, like you know, Bobby, you know, he he needs to have the space sort of like <laughs> officially sort of prepped and like you know. Um, anyway, I'm losing the thread a bit. I enjoyed this. Well, that's what I'm Is the record I cannot find clean, but I actually got this in the Rochester uh, dig. I forgot to show it. This was basically given to me. I think it was just a few dollars. This is one that I can't. I had a version of it that was not in good shape, and I, I think I traded it in for credit at Anger Mom. This one is not really an improvement, but it is a slight improvement. 
Malachi Holy Music, a very unique record, very simple and sparse and minimal. Uh, but it is on the Verve label, and this was found in the basement of Bob Shop. It's, it's a yellow label promo, which I, it's cool to have that. It is mono, there's a stereo of this. There's not much, I mean, I'm saying this, I don't think there's much known about this guy, but this is not really um, primitive Americana. I mean, it, it kind of, it'll appeal to people who like that stuff, but the guitar sound is super sparse, and it's like, it's, it's lots of like, quick bridge sort of trills and um, and the songs are all Wednesday 2nd, 6th, 4th, 5th, 8th there's Jews Harp being played on this, it's a, it's a strange record it's cool, it's a, it's a vibe this is, this is a vibe <laughs> this is a vibe I mean, look at this dude I'd, I'd sit down with that dude for a while, anyway I love this one. I'm still looking for a cleaner copy. It's a it's a VG record, but it, it's it's a strong, pretty strong playing VG. So I do like having the promo. Anyway, I've now labeled all these new sections. We're here. This is all modern composers. I call them avant maestros, new ages. A lot of private issue, new age, and early new age, and things like that. And then. Mind Melt, what I talked about, about this sort of, um, yeah, free cosmic kind of, it's from all different eras, it's uh, a little bit of everything, this is my other Mushi, all the Natural Information Society stuff is here, talked about this already but here it is and uh, all the woo records we I have five different sections for jazz now so sort of the classic stuff here avant and free here here and here and here spiritual all this Let's see what Pharaoh Sanders is spiritual of course and here I have fusions, as I call it, which is, you know, kind of like it says, but I have all my Don Cherries in here. And, uh, you know, all these Sam's, I put all the Miles fusion stuff in here. And then down here, en français. This is about all the French jazz I have right now. Not a ton, but we're working on that. You know. And then, New School. All the modern stuff is here right now. I don't have that much of that, really. But that is also growing. And then, because I had nowhere else to put it, all of my prog-like symptoms are here, too. And now some listening notes for John, the digital gramophone. This is how you listen and probably absorb the Natural Information Society's Since Time is Gravity. A salty salute the first track from the fantastic 1995 album by guided by voices alien lanes is actually a tool to brainwash us into becoming proud boy incels this on the sex list. the new drunk drivers have hoisted the flag
All right, so yeah, I've been reorganizing, and I've been reorganizing this section right here. And I pulled some stuff out of here, and now it is all 100% uh, punk, post-punk, and reggae. Let's let's dive in for a moment. I need to pull a few records that I wanted to sort of sort of think about a radio show that I want to do down the line. And I'm trying to dive into a few weird picks here, so I want to sort of let's do some blind pulls. Not not too blind, but let's see what we have in here. Ah, I got this last year. That um, I don't know if I actually showed it, but I got rid of the reissue and got the two original Doofy, two girls, the one associated with Simon Fisher Turner and Matt Johnson of the the was the second one, Double Happiness. The other one's in here too. Right next to that is the Desperate Bicycles. This is post-punk, but a little more so on the DIY side of things. This is the original on the uh, refill label. Let's go up here a little bit. Let's see what we got here. This is a weird one though, from the Lemon Kittens, Carl Blake, the Prehensile, prehensile Files, uh, Tales with the old sound sticker on St. Mark's Place. Um, I think it's a private press. The sleeve is not in good shape, but this was cheap. This was less than 10 bucks for that, so. I'm gonna try to put them back as we talk. Let's see. Au pairs. This is a great new wave post punk classic. What else is down here? All my liquid liquids. I've shown these before. I'm trying to pick out some things I haven't really gotten to. Here's a great compilation of tapes, cassettes of a DIY English group, Instant Automatons. Sincerely Making a Noise. Uh, this came out many years ago now on the Beat Generation label. I always remember this song, Jillian is normal. Uh, it's fun. This is sort of in that a little bit fall ask, but very like. Do DIY. What we have here the Neo Boys, Crumbling Myths. This is a out of Portland, uh, post punk, 1982. This is actually not that hard to find, I believe, but absolutely top rate. I love it. Fishing around. This is kind of it's similar to the Instant Automatons. This is a compilation. Uh, oh no, this is the rare, super rare LP by the Performing Ferret Band. Tough to find this one the original. Oh, it's also on that D Generation label, so there you go. Um, this was, um, yeah, Chuck Warner compiled this for his Mesthetic series, which is a pretty well known series. Uh, 1981, uh, UK from Cheshire. Where'd this go? Not there. Maybe some public image here. I dig this comp. This is a comp of their 12 inch single, Pulse Lama. One of the tracks here is sort of a. It was a local hit, I think, in New York. Devil Lives in My Husband's Body, maybe it was. Yeah, this is good. It looks like a B 52s type thing. This is great. Definitely more post punk than that. Digging through. I have reissues of these. I hope to upgrade at some point to television personalities. They're, um,. I have the first couple records here. What else we got here? There's a strange, couple strange ones. The Wh uh, Wish Leslie Weiner. This is the original pressing of this. Kind of, um, I guess you'd call it post-punk, but it's really kind of like the Judy Nylon and Crucial Records. On um, it's got an on you sound connection. This I got this originally. I think Superior Bioduct did a reissue, a reissue. She's like a model. And I think that reissue's out of print. This is the original from 93. It's sort of like a really breathy vocal. I like the women doing breathy vocals over minimal sort of post-punk stuff. Which, um... Did I tell you the name of the album? Uh, uh... Leslie Weiner, which... Right next to that... is the uh, first solo album by Greg Sage. I always like this cover. Ooh, terrible glare there. Sorry. Sorry. 
Uh, let's call straight ahead. On the Enigma label. I gotta take it out of the plastic. This one's glaring pretty good, but... Got that dang ring light in the wrong position. There you have it. This is a great... This is a super rare dub album. This was a great reissue. I think this is long gone. Version Dreaded Dub Specialist. The Studio One label is reactivated. And some great stuff has been coming out of this. Um, excellent dub. I don't know, look it up. Maybe they repressed it. Not totally sure. This is a story record here. Jackie Matu. Reggae hits. This one goes back to like the year 1999. And I used to play this all the time. I love the version of... Uh, um, Telstar on this, Wishful Thinking, Alone Again, Naturally. He's doing like sort of like AM gold, AM pop hits, but in his sort of reggae style. Instrumental, sort of soulful still. And this one I used to play. It was an ex-girlfriend I had that... I think I remember playing this for her like when we were breaking up. I guess she didn't like it, but... Um, and yeah, this, this I really identify with this time in my life just after I graduated college. Jackie Mitsu, Reggae Magic. I used to listen to this all the time. I remember I went over to friends and brought it over to a friend's house and I was DJing. I think I ended up, rather than mixing records, I think I just played this constantly. It's on the Coxone label, Studio One, you know. Uh, yeah, one more. Scientist. Heavyweight Dub Champion. Don't know if I ever showed this one. Uh, this is on the Green Sleeves label. I think this is a reissue, though. It's originally from 1980, yeah. Also, Heavy Duty Dub. Done from one of the best in the game at the time. Super young. Um, he just knows how to do it sort of simply, but super precise and deep. And almost has a digital quality, quality to it without even feeling like digital scientist. Listening to uh, experimental audio research. Just got this at Angry Mom has popped in. Mesmerized. There it is. This is on the Sympathy for the Record Industry label. Definitely a 90s type cover. That's what I'm listening to. Alright, a few more that I played on my radio show today. It was generally psychedelic inspired. And also primarily inspired by a live stream that I sort of took part in with Derek, Psychedelic. A few weeks ago we were sort of shooting different records back and forth and talking about them. Um, you know, it was good to sort of like talk shop and sort of talk about some records I hadn't talked about in a while. So that inspired some of the ones I brought to my radio show, which you saw some of. And some of the ones I'm going to also show here that I played in my radio show but you haven't seen yet. Uh, St. Stephen, I haven't played this one in a long time. That's what's playing behind us. Um, on the ABC Pro label, a one-off record. I was kind of thinking this, of this more as like a dark psych folk record, kind of, but it's not really. There's some like some good guitar on this. It's kind of a straight down the middle psych record, a little bit in the second-rate psych territory. You know, stuff that wouldn't be in my top 100, but maybe like in the upper or the lower echelon of my favorites. But I, but one that I definitely keep. That's what we're playing. Um, it is self-titled. And I think you can still get this for around 40 bucks, I think. Um, I also played... There's like two records I didn't play. I did not play St. John Green. I think this came up in the... I think this is one of two records I did not play. That I brought. I meant to play this just because of the dark classic for me on here. Messages from the Dead is, is awesome. This is a Kim Fowley produced band. Right, yeah, and Michael Lloyd, so it's sort of that group. One and only record, St. John, St. John Green. Still got the original shrink. This is a shrink I keep on because I do like that 87 cent sticker. But I didn't play that, okay? A few more I did play. I remember this Chris Cole talking about this one and pointing me out to a great eBay auction. Uh, Michelle uh, Molini. This is on the Crypto label, which uh, the JPM Massiera record I have, or had, it was on. Um, 
progressive leanings, but more stripped down and more sort of like less, you know, hoity toity. <laughs> Uh, really cool one, French, from 1978. That's right, it's all him. He plays everything on this. What else? This definitely came up on the stream of the Banana Moon record, so I brought this specifically for that. David Allen, first solo album by David Allen. This is the BYG Actuel. I just have to show the art too. I love the artwork. There's Robert Wyatt in the middle. Uh, David Allen over here with the banana. I love the font and the, and the artwork on this. So I played that today. Actual 45. And yeah, you know, I, I hadn't sort of played a lot of these records and I'm trying to sort of play things out of my collection a little more in 2024. So here, that's what we have here. This is a cool one. Great track I led off with. Morning Glory, Air Apparent, Sunrise, produced by Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Northern Irish band, actually. You can see right there, produced by old Jimmy Jim. Good, good on the heavier side, a little sunshiny, but a little like the Road album that Noel Redding was on. Kind of ripping. This is on the Buddha label. A lot of glare, I'm sorry folks. If I apologize, does that make it better? This is one I finally played, I mean to play this forever. This is an original 19, no, it's not original, but it's a 99 copy UK record, A Austra, A, a to Austra. This is an Anna ZTC a reissue, Italian label. This is all over the map. It's folk in nature, but it just, freewheeling and off the wall. I gotta play this whole thing. I'm gonna leave this out to play this entire record because what I played in my show I actually quite liked. So I'm gonna put that over there. That's my play pile. And this Bruce Palmer, I really dig. Buffalo Springfield, what a great cover. This solo album on Vanguard. I'm sorry, on um, Verb Forecast. He's really just sort of like going for just a loose sort of like sit-in kind of thing playing acoustic fender bass electric guitar he does have players on here big black i don't know if you guys know big black who had these records on uni he's on this uh, templeton parsley violin oboe and flute from richard aplon rick matthews ed roth so it is a bit of an ensemble here this is a cool little sort of like under the radar record maybe around 30 or 40 bucks for this the cycle is complete from Buffalo Springfield's Bruce Palmer. I think it's 1971. I'm talking Robert Wyatt. I did bring my matching mole. I did bring a bunch of Canterbury related stuff. This is just before he made these two matching mole records with this band. Post Soft Machine. Um, I think Post his first solo album. But then he made these two right before his accident in 1973. This is the first, I believe. This is from 1972. Um, great um, it's prog but it's definitely that Robert Wyatt thing it's his voice it's his whole feel that makes this record so interesting David Sinclair Phil Miller Bill McCormick and Robert Wyatt so yeah that's just some of the good psych I pulled thanks again Derek for doing your stream I'll join again sometime um, if you want to hear the whole show that I did I'll link to that below um, and this is just part of this collection reorganization. It's all coming under one umbrella. Because I, because I reorganize the records and move things around, you start pulling things out. I started sort of pulling some psych out. I d ended up not pulling a lot of the psych I thought I might purge. Instead, I pulled it out and started thinking about it. The stream happened, and the next thing you know, I'm doing a radio show, and it all feels good to sort of shop within your own collection. So that's the sort of spirit of this. You're seeing records move around. You're seeing me pull things. It's nice to have a record collection.